Let's move away from the vending machine example now and have a look at an actual mathematical function. So my inputs to a mathematical function are going to be numbers. And this rule is telling me that I need to multiply the number I input by three first and then subtract seven. And I'm given the domain, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are my input values because the domain is just the set of inputs. So I'm just going to write out those inputs on my page. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to apply my rule to each of those numbers. So the first thing I do is multiply my input by three and then I subtract seven. So three by one is three. Take away seven gives me minus four. So I can write that as an input output pair of one minus four. Moving on to my second input then, I'm multiplying the two by three and then subtracting seven. So two times three is six, take away seven gives me minus one. So my pair is two minus one. I apply the same rule to the three now, three by three, take away seven. So three by three is nine, take away seven gives me two. And my pair is three, two. And I do the same to all of my inputs. So now I can easily say what the range of my function is, because the range, remember, is the set of actual outputs. So what are the actual outputs when I use that particular domain? Well, it's all of these red numbers here. They're all my outputs. So I could write the range as minus four, minus one, two, five, 8, 11. So hopefully this seems quite straightforward to you, that we're just applying a rule to a number. But I think where people get confused is when the function notation is brought in. So I'm just going to show you how we use function notation for this particular example. So when I use function notation, I just want to describe my rule in general. So what I'm doing, and I don't want to use words. So what was I doing to all of my inputs? Well, I was multiplying the input by three and then I was subtracting seven and that gave me my output. So if I'm just talking in general, instead of subbing a specific number into that bracket, I can just use a letter. And the letter I will usually use is X. So then when I bring in the function notation, I say that when I sub X, which is just an input, just stands for any particular input in my domain, into this function F, the rule I must apply is that I multiply my input x by three and then I subtract seven. And that's really all there is to function notation. I've basically described mathematically without using words what I have in this black box.
If you've come across functions before, you may be aware that there are several types of notation we can use to describe functions, but they essentially all mean the same thing. So here I have four different ways we could describe the function that we saw on the last slide. So the first one I have is what I used on the last slide, and we read that as f of x is equal to 3x minus 7. f is just the name of our function. x represents our input. So it's saying that when we input x into our function, to get the output, we must multiply x by 3 and take away 7. We could instead use this mapping notation which means the very same thing. Our input is x and our function f maps x to 3x minus 7 because a function just maps an input to an output. So if our input is x, our output is 3x minus 7. And again, f here is just the name of our function. And we read that notation as f maps x to. We could instead give our output variable a letter. So we could say that our output is called y and then y, our output is equal to three times our input minus seven. Of course though, we don't need to call our function f and our input variable doesn't have to be x. So in the, in the last example I have here, I've used a different input variable. So here I've used t. And this is common in real life situations where we're describing functions of time. And instead of using f to name my function, I've used g. So this function is just called g. It doesn't mean that it does anything differently because as you can see, the input just gets multiplied by three and then seven is taken away, just as before. So all these functions do the exact same thing.